What we'll do then is we'll look at this rack over here, which is the only other thing that's, that's really of uh, any importance. And in this rack, we have this first device, which is the assistive listening. Uh, so you guys are probably familiar with these little headsets that are around there. Um, these, I assume, are handed out to people who require them, and this is if you are hard of hearing. Um, and you can actually send um, the signals from here directly to this unit. This unit transmits throughout the entire church. It's basically a radio transmitter is all it is. And uh, it's picked up by these devices and then you can listen to it on the headset. It has its own volume control, which is nice because if you are hard of hearing, essentially you can control your own level. Hey? Uh, yeah. <laughs> they work great. Right. <laughs> You're the golden boy here, remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> I know you're aware of it, you hear us, guys. Okay, so these are great because if people will use them, it makes a world of difference. And I tell you, if they don't, I don't care what kind of sound system you have, you'll never please everyone. And the thing to remember in, in doing sound in, in, is don't take it too personally if you get a complaint. Um, because if you, if you can make everyone happy, it would be unusual. There's going to be those people that are going to come forward and say it's too loud, it's too quiet, it's too, it's too whatever. So kind of what I do is I take the average of the complaints. If I get three people tell me they can't hear, that's worth listening to. If you get one person telling you they can't hear and they're hard of hearing, don't, don't change the way you do things specifically for that reason. Suggest perhaps they use an assistive listening device, okay? Um, if you have somebody who's uh, in the congregation who knows sound, um, maybe they have a band or whatever, you find people like that typically want to impart their opinion. Fantastic. If it's constructive and it's helpful, certainly listen and if you can incorporate what they say, they might come and say, hey, that microphone sounds like a telephone. It's, it's too ringy or it's too whatever. Those are the kind of comments I would listen to and try and make adjustments for when you can. Okay. So we also have two boxes here, and these two boxes are your wireless microphones. The power switch is located right here. All right, there's really nothing more on these that you need to touch. As long as your body pack, do we have the packs here? Um, a ah, pack, yep. Fantastic. Thanks very much. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, so these are your transmitters. Each one of these is labeled lapel one, lapel two and there's a matching label up here, lapel one and lapel two. Batteries in these things will last you approximately eight hours, okay? Um, don't use rechargeables because they typically don't work very well. Um, and the thing you gotta remember with these type of packs is when I turn this on, I get a green light. That green light means that the battery power in this pack is 100%. I got a yellow and I got a red. So obviously as the battery power drops, these lights change. Now, if I put a dead battery in here and I turn it on, for the first five minutes, I'm going to get a green light. So it's going to indicate that this has a good battery in it. That's the nature of batteries. Even dead ones will put out a reasonable amount of power at nine volts for a few minutes. So I always make sure I either A, put a fresh battery in, which is not very environmentally friendly, or B, turn it on in advance of the service so that it's on for a few minutes before um, the actual service begins. And then check it before you hand the mic off. Or if you're keeping the mic in your person, turn it on a little bit early, and the guys working sound promise you that they will make sure it's off on the board. And that's important, right? Because if this mic's turned on in the back area, it obviously has the ability to transmit through walls. So you gotta be pretty careful, okay? What you could do is turn it on, confirm you have a green light, but take the microphone element and just put it in your pocket okay. until, just as a backup, right? Okay. Um, there's lots of horror stories, as I'm sure you've heard, about people turning on mics early. So, okay, so that's what we do. Green light means go. When we have a green light on here, it's transmitting a signal. There's another switch on here, which is the on and mute switch, okay? And that is simply controlling the audio from the microphone. On and mute, as in muted, okay? When you turn this on, what you see here is there's two banks of lights that light up, okay? These are a, a professional type wireless microphone and the reason there's two banks of lights there is this unit right here actually has two antennas on the back, okay? And these two antennas mean that it's a dual receiver and the reason that that's good is it means that it, you get a lot better quality out of it. The reason you need to know this is that if you turn the microphone on and, and it's on but you do not have any lights here or if you have very, very low lights, it means that the signal is really weak, okay? That means that the microphone might be way at the other end of the church, okay? 
But if you see low lights in this area here, and you're, uh, you're, you're basically uh, dealing with a, a, a low signal strength issue, okay? By the, low lights, you mean dim? Low as in they jump up and down this way, just like an audio meter. Okay. So what you'll see is right now it's a plus five on both because I'm literally right next to it. But as you go further away, the signal strength will drop, okay? So in what essence... Is it, what is it when you're normally doing it? Does anyone know? It's is probably it, five and five. Is it? Okay. okay. But if you start to see one of them go out completely, that's fine, as long as one of them stays illuminated. That's just, this system is designed to, to receive from one or the other. But all you basically watch is, do you have two banks of light? And that means that your wireless is operating well and your battery status is good, okay? If you see them faltering and you see the light starting to flicker, it's a pretty good chance that this battery pack is going dead, I and mean, you can tell. So, for then, so what do you do when you turn her up a little more? You can't, because once you start losing battery power, you don't, it doesn't get quieter, it gets noisier. Okay. So the only thing you can do is you can try and uh, pick up on another microphone, such as the podium, uh, or you go change the battery. Um, but in essence, you have to wait for a break to do that, right? right. So anyway, but that's what that means. Two solid banks of green, and you're good to go. So when I put this from mute to on, you can see this lights up here. Now that is the actual microphone itself. Check, check, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, so this is your actual audio levels and you should see a reasonable level on there. Now with these type of microphones, you can change the amount of gain that you get with a little screwdriver in here and it depends on the person's voice. They're set pretty low right now. Um, and that means that you're going to get a reasonable signal level out of them. Um, you have a pretty good voice, so you don't, you don't need to uh, have a super sensitive microphone with you. So it works fairly well. Now you're going to be using the headset anyway, so... Anyway, what we're getting out of this is we do have uh, a level on here, and that's the important thing, okay? When you place this microphone, it's important that you get it in a position that works. When I go out and... Uh, and do training for sound systems, and I very often I'll observe uh, a service before I do it. Most of the problems in church sound are not really to do with the equipment per se, but how people apply microphones. Uh, everyone assumes that a microphone is just this magical device that you can put anywhere and it will pick up a voice. The reality is that it's, it's not the case. It's every microphone has a specific purpose, and every purpose is... Um, Every, every application is because the microphone has some characteristic which makes it work. So these, these microphones specifically have a relatively small pattern on them. Um, and so they, they don't pick up from a distance. I would not pick you up from here with this microphone. It's designed to basically sort of a volleyball sized uh, pattern on it. Okay. The sound obviously goes in through the top. And I know that sounds silly, but I have seen them put in upside down. Um, you want to put it about one hand span below the chin. Okay, so it needs to be located about here. It's important that it's actually attached to something which is stiff enough to keep the microphone pointing up and down. Very often you'll see they'll start to drift or they're going to be pointing off over here. There's a lot of options of where it can point, but ideally speaking, you want this microphone pointing at the chin when centered. And what I normally do is I clip it on like that. It's really hard for me to do it myself. I'm used to doing it on other people, but you can actually take the wire and loop it in behind on the clip like that. And that gets the wire basically going down straight, okay? But you want it to be positioned like that. And that's important. If it doesn't, don't expect it to pick up properly. 